I mean, I got ginger ale and all kind of. All right, hurry up, y'all. I know y'all should be in the bed. K. Dixon, Mickey, Mickey. Yeah, it's going to be real quick. Ronnie Reese, hey. Uh, whoa, okay. Hello, 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 hello. Jeremiah Dean, Bishop Hillard. Hey, everybody. I'm so glad that y'all are up. Noel Price. Somebody said, I'm so happy. I think that's Vicky. Uh, hey, Pastor Joshua. Hey, Lena and Lexi. Did I see you guys today? I don't think I... No, I saw Lexi. I didn't see Lena. Tiffany Jordan, hello. I know it's so late. I know, I know. I don't have anything planned for Connecticut right now. I, I think, I think. Hey, David Winston, what's going on, man of God? Hey, Teddy, I love you. All right, let's go real quick. First of all, I had a very, very awesome time at church today. I had a great time at church today. And I didn't periscope my message. My wife did. So I think you've got about 20 some hours before you uh, uh, can't see it anymore. So go on my wife's periscope. Naviel, hey, Prophet Keisha. Um, I want you to go to my wife's periscope. It's Camila Stevenson, K-A-M-I-L-A-H, and uh, go see it. Um, it was a great word, and I was talking about the God of the follow-up. God is a God of follow-up, so go watch it. It's going to bless you. It's kind of controversial. It may shake you up. It may bless you. You know what me is kind of one of them things where you either love it or you hate it, but I have very little people, very little that are in between. So go and watch that. It's going to be awesome. Um, I wanted to just share with you a real quick pointer uh, before I head to bed. And, and that pointer is this. Um, there are two sides to discernment. I am very concerned, and this is as a revelatory person. I'm a revelatory person. But I'm very concerned about the misappropriation of, uh, the misrepresentation of the gift of discerning of spirits. And the way that that gift uh, of the Holy Ghost and that ability, which is not a natural ability, it's not a human ability, um, I'm concerned that we're only using one half of the two-edged sword. Generally speaking, and I made this point in my message today, so I thought I wanted to share it with you. When people talk about having the gifts of, of discernment or having a discernment or my discernment was going off, I got strong discernment. They only really refer to actions, statements, motives, and deeds that come from hell. And certainly that is one of the functions of discerning of spirits, which is to cause there to be a clarity and insight concerning what is motivated by the forces of darkness, certainly. But the Bible says that there is a two-edged sword. So when you look at Hebrews chapter 4 and you study the function of the word of God, the Bible says it's quick, it's powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It compares the word of God to being like a two-edged sword. But then it talks about how it, it is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart, separating soul from spirit, joint from marrow. So the principle is, is that discerning of spirits has a two-edge. It's two-edged. It's not just one edge. So the challenge is, is that when you get people who walk around, you know, mean mugging people and frowning all the time and uh, talking about their discernment is going off and it's only like a channel of what's going on from the powers of hell, then you've got to wonder if the source of that information is the Spirit of God. If it never has any representation or any articulation about what God is doing and what God is invested and what God is up to, you've got to wonder if it's the Spirit of God or if it's unhealed suspicion or if it's paranoia or if it's gossip or cynicism or uh, if it's uh, uh, mistrust or fear. And so I'm concerned about the fractured 
presentation of the gift of discerning of spirits because the way we present it is like it's the detective ability that helps us to find the devil and it's not by the word of God what discerning of spirits does and what discerning of spirits achieves is the ability to track all supernatural activity that motivates any action now um, discerning of spirits is, is probably a, a gifting in my personal life that is active very, very often. And obviously, it helps you to identify the forces of darkness and helps you to clearly assess what spirit is behind what deed. But I'm going to tell you another uncommon way the gift of discerning of spirits has manifested in my life. And I hope that this blesses you. Sometimes when you are dealing with people who don't look like what they're going to look like, who don't appear like what they're going to appear and they are in process and they are being delivered uh, in a church context, you may have people that are in the, uh, under the sway or under the control of addiction. You may have uh, uh, men who wear bondage uh, 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 more flagrantly than others or whatever the case may be. The Bible talks about something called the treasure in the earthen vessel. And one of the things that we got to stop acting like is that everything that God is doing in a person is obvious. And sometimes what I have learned as a shepherd, as a father, even as a prophet, is that there are things that God is doing in the lives of people that he is hid from the majority. God is not always making what he is doing in a heart and in a life public knowledge. There are risks to making that public knowledge because if God reveals all the time what he is doing in the heart of somebody, even if they look hard or even if they look rebellious or even if they look perverse or even if they look wicked, sometimes the Holy Ghost is at work in a person beyond what you can detect. So then in my life, one of the areas that God has used the gift of discerning of spirits is to see where his hand is, even if the person was dirty or feminine or, 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 or in, in sin or in bondage. Life provides armor, layers and levels of outfits to to confuse and misconstrue the ministry of the work of the word of God and the ministry of the Holy Ghost inside of you. But I have a problem with people who say, hey, I believe in casting out devils. I'm a spiritual warfare person. I believe in deliverance. But you can't see and identify treasure in earthen or dirty vessels. It takes for the gift of discerning of spirits to look at Saul and see Paul in him. To look at Simon and see Peter attempting to grow. So certainly you do use the gift of discerning of spirits to identify the devil because he needs to be identified. You can expose him if you can or, or, or accurately identify him. So I, I am that guy. I believe in that. But the gift of discerning of spirits is not a supernatural manifestation of detective ability. It is the ability to know all spiritual activity as as is active in the soul. Here's another problem with most people's claim to discernment. Hey, prophetess Michelle, love you. Can't wait to see you this week. Here's another problem that I have with, with uh, people who say they have discernment of spirits, and it's this. If you have less than excellent, masterful command over the scriptures, I doubt very highly that what you are doing is discerning things. I, 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 you may be detecting them. You may be playing clues and categories. You may be even fruit inspecting, but it can't be supernatural if it's not motivated by the spirit. And it can't be motivated by the spirit if it does not contain the word. Now, I know I'm going to lose you there because a lot of us really believe that we can discern above, beyond, aside from, and without the help of the scriptures. 
But think about this. Are you really discerning if you don't have a language base for what you've detected by the Holy Ghost? The scriptures are the language of the Spirit of God. So if you have a problem with remembering scripture, if you have a problem with reciting scripture, with rehearsing them, and if the scriptures are not the basis behind your logic for interpreting people's actions, motives, doings, the spirit in which something is delivered, then the challenge is the only verbiage, the only language that you have to interpret what you've discerned are found in the recesses of your soul. And quite frankly, beloved, that can't be trusted because you got a lot of stuff lingering in there. You got your mama's devils, you got your auntie's fears, you got cultural stuff. There are many voices, a, a, a accurate or a, a credible prophetic education should include training on all of the voices that are going out in the world. You got the voice of your fear, the voice of your culture, the voice of your race, the voice of your dreams. You got the voice, you got all of those particular voices that are at work, right? And so because of those voices at work, you've got to be able and skilled at identifying the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God is mostly conveyed by the word of God. So when you discern the Bible, it be, or when you meditate in the scriptures and you know the principles, the logics of the scriptures, then you've got a basis for your discernment. So without the word of God, you have no real basis for discernment. All you've got is gut feelings. And how many of you understand that right now in the kingdom and right now in the world and right now in your city, we can't be making decisions off of gut feelings and off of hunches and off of intuition and off of suspicion. You have got to have a language by the Spirit of God, by the Word of God, that gives you a vocabulary for what you discern. And, and let's, let me say this to you prophetically, because this is the moment for keen discernment. Things are getting more sophisticated, and things are getting more complex, and things are getting more difficult to decipher. And one of the things that Satan does is Satan loves to make sure that there is no uh, uh, differentiation between the wicked and the holy, the profane and the not. So he blurs the line through culture, through church, through experiences. And when the lines are blurred, there can be no real focus and no real fidelity on the man Christ Jesus because we don't have quality information to make a conscious choice. So discernment is a very powerful tool right now because doctrines of devils are going out in mass. Uh, there are, are profuse teachings that are literally obliterating many of the ancient pillars of truth that have upheld society and civilization since the world began. So because of that, we need a masterful hold on the full counsel of God as by the word. And we also need a supernatural God-breathed ability to discern by the spirit. You have got to have the gift of discerning of spirits. Now, I'm a man who has a powerful love for the gifts, right? Um, and, and so I don't believe that it's robbery. The Bible says it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So uh, there are some who teach that it's immature or it is um, juvenile or selfish to pray about the gifts of the spirit. Uh, but I want to challenge you that the Bible says, if you ask, if any man lacks wisdom and, and discerning of spirits is a form or a manifestation of the spirit of wisdom. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. You need to pray for keen discernment, keen discerning of spirits. And a, so, so like this guy flowing on the XO who just said the church is filled with hypocrites and, and you're not saved. So that disqualifies your opinion because actually you beat us to hell. Discerning of spirits is employed by the word of God. And this is a moment where you've got to have keen discerning of spirits. Now, here's another encouragement and I'm going to let you go. Um... One of my personal value systems, I don't want you to necessarily take this as a, um, as a rebuke necessarily, unless it's God talking to you. One of the things I promised the Lord was that no matter how big my church gets, we took in 20 something, almost 30 combined. And today we are always taking in new people. I promised the Lord that no matter 
how old my church got or how big it got, I would never stop working the altar. I would never stop. Number one, I would make time for altar ministry. It would be a part of our culture to take time, set space aside in our church to minister to people. I'm not going to stop that, right? Here's what I know about ministering to people in my church is that it keeps you sharp in the gifts of the spirit. When you make time to labor with people in prayer ministry, deliverance, prophecy, whatever, then God has to supernaturally aid you in your ability to diagnose the problem, re have the solution revealed, and to give wisdom about how to stay out of the snare that you put them in. So one of the reasons why we're dusty in the gifts is because we don't spend time in prayer to people. We let people live with devils and then give them drive-by meetings at this two-second altar call and send them to their seat by faith, hoping that them devils will hold steady until next year. But I believe that one of the things working an altar does is it keeps you sharp and keen in the gifts of the Spirit. If you are in a deliverance and a spiritual warfare environment, discerning of spirits is going to be a powerful ability that you grow and are cultivated in. Here is the mistake my church made. My church was born on the ministry of deliverance and spiritual warfare. So we were so strong in discernment that we forgot the need to love. And we almost became publicists for the spirit of perversion and the powers of hell. Because all we were seeing is the hiding, the sabotage, the camouflage, the, the sneaking of the devil. Once we grew in love and we grew in community and we grew in doctrine and we grew by the word, the, dis the gift of discerning of spirit started operating in our life in a more profound way because now the basis of our discernment was not fear and fearfulness. It was full love. Do you understand that? And the Bible talks about how perfect love casts out fear. So your love walk increases your discernment walk. If you're not growing in love, you're not growing in clarity. Because God trusts information with people who are interested in being mature in love. So if you have a person that's mean and they blame their meanness on what they discern, what you have is another form of Christian carnality. You don't have discernment because what you see should not change your character. And that was something we had to learn. A lot of what we saw would change our character. And I would use a scripture in Ecclesiastes that says, with much knowledge comes much grief. And unfortunately, there is some truth to that. But you can't allow the information that you perceive by the Spirit to cue your reactions, your responses, or your behavior when you're dealing with people. So it, 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 I am passionate about the gift of discerning of spirits. And the fact that, that, that we are in such a, a religious Religiously charged season where there is almost like uh, uh, a polytheism in the spirit and a war and a competition of the gods over the future of America. The church is in need of a new level of protection by the gift of discerning of spirits. And so my admonishment to you is begin to pray for this gift to manifest in your life. Pray for this gift to take root in your life. It's going to take discernment. And I feel like to some of you, this may be a prophetic exhortation. Some of you have been praying for God to change something in your life. But let me speak to you. It's going to take discernment to know when God begins to move in your life because God is moving in unorthodox ways. Change looks like chaos before it's taken its course. Receive that. Change begins by looking like chaos. And it takes a while for it to look like change. And many of you have been praying for God to change something. And what you got was chaos. So some of you right now are in the midst of of the infancy of change and its chaos. All you've got to do is endure the moments of chaos, find clarity, and you will retrospectively see the change. 
God told Ezekiel, prophesy to the dry bones. Let change come. He called on the spirit of change, the power of change. And what happened? A shaking, a rattling, and a noise. And nothing about it was clear. It took for a season for bone to find his bone. Without the function of discerning of spirits, the chaos would have been intimidating. The chaos would have incited fear. The chaos would have brought terror and trepidation. But this is why America and her church are in need of discerning of spirits more now than ever before. Because we are, the Lord kept telling me, America, why do you fear? Why do you fear? I believe that one of the things that's grieving the heart of God is America's hysteria over these political discussions. Listen to me. Just because these two people decided to run for president does not mean that God got off his throne. America belongs to Jesus Christ. So if Donald Trump wins, if Hillary Clinton or Bernie wins, at the, at the end of the day, what matters is that we're going to pray for those in authority. And we're going to be willing to pray that God's man is seated in authority so that his vision can be administrated. But look at what Satan has done. is released a spirit of panic, of bitterness, of anxiety, of chaos, of hysteria, and literally cultural delusion. So, and the reason why these things are prevailing is because of the absence of purely motivated discerning of spirits. So my prayer for you tonight is that God heal your broke discernment. If you are only looking or if you're only using discernment to go and do cleanup work behind Satan, and to go and play clues and categories and dust off of fingerprints on, on stuff that Satan has been in, that's only a fraction of the use of your discernment. You got to also see where God is when he's not obvious. You've got to be willing to look at people in seed form and perceive potential. And you can't do that except by the spirit. You've got to look at people and find the treasure in the earthen vessel. So that is my burden tonight, and I want you to hear the word of the Lord. This is a time for you to heighten the gift of discerning of spirits in your life. Hebrews 4 is my favorite segment of scripture. I actually wrote a whole book on it. It's called Strange Fire. It's my favorite book on or uh, my favorite verse on it, and it helps unveil principles and truth about the gift of discerning of spirit. That is my prayer to you tonight, or for you tonight, rather. And I'm hoping that you get good rest and that you get good sleep and that you are not interrupted by any source other than the Holy Ghost. Some of you have an appointment tonight when you go to bed. God is going to take rest from your pillow because you've got unfinished business with him. I want to take this opportunity to invite you to my prayer conference. I am having an intercessors meeting and it is so an Issachar moment. I mean, this meeting is so appropriate. I guess I hadn't even realized it when I scheduled it, but it is so appropriate. I want you psalmists, you seers, you prophetic people, you intercessors to meet me at 6028 South Champlain Avenue in Chicago, Illinois, and we're joining for three days of prayer and three days of prayer training where we're going to make you strong intercessors who identify with the calling to prayer, with the vision of prayer, and who are willing to have prayer grace come upon you and be immersed in a new level of authority for your purpose. That's this Thursday through this Saturday. Spread the word for it. Hey, beloved, it's almost midnight. I bid you peace in the precious name of Jesus, and I want you to get some rest, okay? I hope that this has blessed you and I trust that everything will be well until I see you guys in the morning. All right. Preach twice, then ministered, laid hands to about 40 people, prophesied, and then went to one of my churches on the west side. So this black man is tired. I'm going to sleep. I love you so very much. Thank you for sharing this moment with me and I'll talk to you soon. God bless.